And what I have here is a uh, an older model uh, Remington 1100 uh, and uh, 1100 Magnum, that is, um, that my neighbor wanted me to take a look at. So I thought I'd, I'd record this as I break it down and inspect it for wear and tear or any damage. Uh, I've already tried to shoot a few rounds out of this and it's not uh, loading or ejecting the rounds properly. So I imagine there's something wrong with the, uh, the gas tube and the uh, uh, something else going on inside the receiver. But uh, let's go ahead and break this down and uh, we'll take a look at it. I've already run the, I, I ran the serial number through Remington and this is a model that was manufactured or this this gun was manufactured in 1975 so it's uh, it's damn near 30 years old um, at first glance from the outside there's a bit of uh, wear and tear that you would expect to see on a 30 year old gun um, this uh, two and three quarter inch barrel looks uh, looks fair from the outside uh, for the past eight years or so this this gun's been locked away in a closet so it hasn't uh, been exposed, but there is no that I can tell. Okay, there's no uh, for the for the breakdown of a 1100, first thing we need to do is to remove the butt cap. Simply unscrew this. I'm going to set this off to the side. The whole thing's coming off. Remove the fore end. I can already see one problem. See that just fell out. That's the uh, uh, the barrel seal for the gas tube. So uh, that shouldn't be coming off in one pe or <laughs> multiple pieces. And then we slide the barrel off. Yeah, sure enough. Yeah, O-ring. The O-ring is in multiple pieces. That's not good. Uh, this is the uh, that's the piston and that's the piston seal. They're in one piece, but heavily corroded. Uh, should be able to get these cleaned up pretty well. Should be able to reuse them, but that O-ring is shot. So it's going to need a new O-ring. All right, so barrel is off. Keeping all my parts organized here. All right. The next step, I'm going to turn this around a bit. Uh, next step is to remove the carrier. I'm going to do this by pressing up. Uh, actually, first I got to pull the pull the handle out, pressing up, and reach inside to release the latch and. There we go. Everything comes off. Okay. The action looks okay. Very, very dirty. Spring detent is fine. There's a bit of wear and tear on the uh, on the receiver group there. It's uh, it looks like it's okay. It's just real dirty. A lot of a lot of residue from uh, many years of shooting this firearm. All right, the carrier group. Again, it's again it's very dirty. It's going to need to be cleaned up real good. Uh, but nothing that some CRP won't uh, won't fix. The buffer is pretty worn down. That's going to have to be replaced. The buffer. Firing pin looks like it's all in one piece and it looks like it's uh, good. The head of the firing pin itself is still rounded. It's not mushroomed or anything so that's good. Okay, so the carrier looks to be in good, good shape. The firing pin is moving back and forth freely. Alright, so uh, the carrier just needs to be cleaned up. All right, uh, magazine tube. I don't see any rust, but a lot of the bluing is worn off. 
Uh, the receiver itself, there's quite a bit of bluing worn off this and a lot of rust. Yeah, there's a bit of rust on this. Um, it's not in horrible shape, but if you want to get this gun back to its pristine condition, that's going to need to be taken down, refinished, and blued. Okay, let's drop out the uh, receiver pins and get the trigger group out. Just there we go. All right, as suspected, it's very filthy. Uh, I forget what this part's called, but it is in the correct position. Sometimes this will flop underneath, and you're not going to uh, drive your. Uh, drive it back properly. Now something doesn't look right here and I'm going to have to go back to the Remington manual later but I think there's supposed to be another piece on this. This is your uh, this is your action release um, or your carrier release so when the shell comes in or when you go to rack up another round this pops back when the round comes in and lets the lets the carrier go forward to chamber that round up into the breech. But something there's not something right here. I'll have to go look in the website. All right, the sear. I'm sorry, the hammer. Feels like there's good spring tension on the hammer. Safety's tight, it's not flopping around, so that's good. Thing is dirty, 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 dirty. Uh, all right, the trigger group is going to take some cleaning, and I'm going to do some more investigating on what's wrong with the carrier. Uh, the carrier release, something's not quite right there. All right, once we get down to that. Oh, that wasn't supposed to fall out. Let's see what's happened here. This is a sh shell. That's a shell holder, and I'm pretty sure that is supposed to be staked in place. Um, or is that the carrier lock? Oh, yeah, this is the carrier lock. Um, Again, I'm going to have to look at the website because I don't think that is supposed to be bent right there. I think it's supposed to be straight. And as you can see, there's a bit of a bend to this. That bend might be correct, but I don't think this end right here is supposed to be bent. So I'll have to take a look at that. All right, let's see. We've got our... Uh, again, I'm sorry, I forget what the name of this is, but it's uh, integral to the uh, chambering of a new round. It's bent. Should look like a uh, should look like a wishbone. Should be a little bit of a bend right here, but you can see the one side does have a nice curve to it, but this side is pretty straight. That means we're not going to have uh, we're not going to be gripping into the uh, the carrier group like we should. Uh, the back end here which is 
Yeah, it looks okay. Dirty again. I say this this gun is 1975, and who knows the last time it was cleaned. So uh, there's quite a bit. Oh my God, is that dirty in there? Uh, it's pretty evident this gun was never taken down and cleaned properly. Let's see the action spring. Action spring feels pretty, pretty snug in there, but there's a lot of powder residue. Wow, that is powder. There's a lot of powder res residue back in here. So uh, that whole action spring is going to be needed to taken out, which I'm not going to do right now because it requires taking the uh, butt plate off, unscrewing the action spring and taking this part off I'm not ready to do that quite yet this is just a video on the preliminaries of the condition of the gun so so far we need a new gas piston gas piston and gas seal a new um, um, barrel seal there's something wrong with the trigger group I'll need to look into that further. Uh, we probably need a new one of these, which uh, I'm sorry, I forget the name of this. Um, but it's important for um, cycling the uh, cycling the action. This piece here uh, may or may not be damaged. Um, don't remember, but I don't recall that piece supposed to be bent. It needs a new barrel. Uh, the stock. The stock's got some normal wear and tear. It's probably okay. I wouldn't, depending on if you were trying to return this gun to its uh, uh, original original condition, making it pristine, then you'd want to redo this stock because there is a lot of dings and scratches, and I can see there's some water damage delamination down here by the butt stock. Uh, the handle end cap is delaminating here. There's a lot of little cosmetic things wrong, but I mean it's still solid wood and it's not chipping or uh, anything up here so from that standpoint it's okay but the receiver there's a lot of areas that the bluing has been worn down and that's just going to eventually be rust uh, I think the only thing that saved that from rusting up was the fact that this gun's been stored in a in a case in the back of a closet for at least eight years all right so let's take a look at the tube I'll do this without losing everything okay okay there's it definitely is an old <laughs> if there was any guess before that definitely tells me it's an old gun because they've stopped making this end cap back in the 90s I think uh, let's see the 1100 stop for 12 16 or 20 gauge dirty but still serviceable uh, the spring tube spring length I have to double check this I think if I, the, the old rule of thumb as it goes from the end to here so it looks about right Twenty-four inches. Yeah, twenty-four inches and twenty-four inches and twelve. Yeah, so it's got a double. It, the spring length is okay. Uh, another thing it shows it's an old gun. Uh, I don't remember when, but I want to say it was in the early '90s that these uh, uh, the end the end stop where the shell goes on. Or where the shell meets as you're putting the shells back into the tube it starts compression on the string at this point here they started making these orange so you, it was uh, quite visible that you were out of rounds uh, and that the uh, um, the magazine was clear uh, back then back in the 70s they were just black they went they were uh, not color-coded in any way all right well, let's see what else we got here think I think this is taken down about as much as I'm going to take it down 
the retainer spring it's not moving too easily but it's just dirty I think cleaning that up might take care of that there's a lot of powder residue in here wow what in the heck did he shoot in here okay the spring is in good shape staked in place where it should be so yeah that's about as far as I'm going to take this down the tube is in good and solid I don't see any damage on that oh there's a lot of carbon back in there okay well this whole thing is going to be, have to be cleaned I have to take a nice hot bath in uh, CRP get this bugger cleaned up now oh, let's see about the gas action here Yeah, it's pretty dirty. Pieces are straight. No binding. Not loose. That's good. A little sticky there. That just needs to be cleaned. And, oh yeah, I've already looked at the carrier. Ooh, that's, that's real sticky. That's your shell ejector, and that should be uh, should have a good strong spring, but it should move without any stickiness or resistance. Uh, again, that's probably just uh, just cleaning. So there you have it. There's a disassembly of a Remington 1100, circa 1975.